let's take a look at how the UK's Royal Air Force almost got F-14 Tomcats. In one of aviation history's greatest what-if moments, the Royal Air Force, or RAF, was considering the F-14 Tomcat as its fighter of choice. And while today this may seem unusual, we have to remember that during the Tomcat's consideration phase, the RAF, along with the Royal Navy's Fleet Air Arm, or FAA, were already operating another iconic American design, the F-4 Phantom. The F-4 served with distinction in air defense, tactical reconnaissance, close air support, and fleet interception roles for the UK. Eventually, as other aircraft such as the Harrier came online, the Phantom delegated most close air support and strike roles to those platforms and focused on the interceptor role. One interesting side note about the UK Phantoms. Designated F-4Ks, these aircraft were powered by the slightly more powerful Rolls-Royce engines as compared to the American Phantoms, which had the ubiquitous General Electric J-79s. More on that later. However, as good as the Phantom was, the British government was already looking to its replacement. The Cold War was in full swing and Soviet bombers and fighters were becoming more advanced and in the ensuing arms race, the UK needed to keep up. During this time, several aircraft designs were proposed, including the TSR-2, which was ultimately canceled. General Dynamics then offered the F-111 in a purpose-built configuration for the UK. Designated the F-111K, it featured longer wings, a Mark II navigation and fire control system, a higher gross weight, and provisions for reconnaissance equipment. In 1967, 50 units were ordered by the RAF. However, by 1968, the order was cancelled, citing higher costs. At the same time, the UK was working with Italy and West Germany to develop a European-produced Multi-Role Combat Aircraft, or MRCA. This effort ultimately produced the Panavia Tornado, which had three main variants. The Tornado IDS, or Interdictor Strike, which was the fighter-bomber version. The Tornado ECR, or Electronic Combat Reconnaissance. The Suppression of Enemy Air Defenses, or SEED version and the Tornado ADV or Air Defense variant, the Interceptor version. It is during the Tornado ADV's development where the Tomcat enters the scene. As a result of ongoing budget cuts and airframes aging out, by the late 1970s, the entirety of the UK was defended by less than 100 fighters. One newspaper summed up the situation by stating, The few have never been fewer. The Tornado ADV was meant to bring RAF numbers back up to strength. However, as development of the ADV went on, costs continued to rise and the overall project suffered from seemingly endless delays. Things got so bad that the British Ministry of Defense began to look at American fighters to close the fighter gap. The F-14 Tomcat, F-15 Eagle, and F-16 Fighting Falcon, aka Viper, were all considered. The F-16 was ruled out because it was too small and lacked the range of its larger counterparts and the F-15 was eliminated since at the time it was a single-seat platform. The two-seat F-15E Strike Eagle was about a decade away. This left the F-14, which the Ministry of Defense concluded that only the Tomcat could meet the UK's defense needs. This was likely due to the two-seat configuration of the F-14, which would allow for a radar intercept officer or RIO and the room for electronic countermeasures equipment. However, the price tag for a brand new F-14 was too high, and the idea was shelved at least temporarily. As the Tornado ADV program continued to extend timelines, the British Tomcat was once again considered, this time with a twist. Instead of purchasing new F-14s built at the Grumman factory, used or pre-owned F-14s could be purchased and converted to fill the interceptor role. This was in the mid to late 70s when both the US Navy and Iran were operating F-14s, leading some to speculate that there may have been a potential batch of F-14s that could be procured. However, this acquisition strategy of used F-14s was quickly dismissed by the Ministry of Defense, which publicly stated that the concept came from lower-level officers and ultimately was not pursued. Still, we can imagine that had the Tomcat filled the interceptor role, this would have allowed the Tornado to focus on strike and seed missions. How differently would things have been? Before we take a deeper dive into the possibilities for the RAF Tomcat, today's video is brought to you by Masterworks. It's no secret that diversifying your portfolio is a sound strategy, especially during these times of unprecedented inflation. One investment area that is growing traction is contemporary art. Not many people have known until recently, but from 1995 to year-end 2021, contemporary art prices have outpaced 
the S&P's 500 total returned by more than double for the past 25 years. However, the world of investing in fine art has been exclusive until now. Masterworks is a unique platform that allows independent investors like me to invest in fine art. Today, about two-thirds of billionaires allocate 10-30% to of their portfolios to art. Indeed, art investments are the least correlated to stocks and bonds, providing a potentially good hedge against inflation and opportunities for diversification. There is currently a waitlist to sign up, but with my code, you can skip the waitlist and start investing today. Use the link in the description below to gain priority access. Doing so also helps my channel. Just be careful in everything related to investing, nothing is risk-free. And now, back to the Royal Tomcat. The acquisition of the F-14 Tomcat by the Royal Air Force and Navy would have likely altered the aircraft's trajectory in history. If the F-14 had been selected for the air defense variant, the Tornado would have likely been able to focus on the multi-role air-to-ground role and support jammer aircraft role. Additionally, an RAF Tomcat would have almost certainly been powered by homegrown Rolls-Royce engines, as early versions of the F-14 had notorious issues with their TF-30 engines. Many of these issues were resolved as the program went on with the introduction of the GE F-110 engines. However, an early Rolls-Royce powered F-14 would have been a sight and sound to behold. Getting back to the Phantom, American pilots were often impressed when they saw what the Rolls-Royce powered F-4s could do, and you have to think the same would apply to the Tomcat. We can also speculate that the use and further development of the AIM-54 Phoenix missiles would have continued and an AMRAAM-equipped Tomcat would have become a reality. Imagine the BVR capabilities of an F-14 with AMRAAMs and Phoenix missiles. Furthermore, had the Royal Air Force started to acquire F-14s, per unit costs would have gone down, which likely would have led other countries that were considering the Tomcat to adopt them as their fighter of choice. One such nation was Canada, who was looking for a replacement for the F-101 Voodoo and went as far as to send officials to visit the Grumman plant. A deal looked to be in the works but fell through at the last moment. And as we now know, Canada instead went with the F-18, which they still operate today. Japan had also expressed interest in the Tomcat and also had to decide between the F-14 and F-15. Although Grumman made great efforts to sell the Tomcat to the JSDF, in the end, Japan went with the F-15 which they still also operate to this day. And finally, then, West Germany was approached to see if they'd be interested in purchasing Tomcats for their Air Force. West Germany sent officials to tour the facilities at Grumman's production line, but a deal never materialized. It's not hard to imagine that if the RAF had adopted the Tomcat, one or all three of these nations would have also adopted the F-14. Aside from likely enabling other nations to adopt the Tomcat, RAF usage of the F-14 would have likely furthered plans for future versions of the F-14. In fact, it turns out the Tomcat's manufacturer Grumman had plans for a Super Tomcat all the way back in 1987. Let's take a deeper dive into this planned fighter and see what could have been. Grumman's Super Tomcat was dubbed ST-21 for Super Tomcat 21st Century. Development of this variant began by using the F-14 as a starting point, which would have led to the Quick Strike Tomcat. This version would have featured air-to-surface missiles, improved radar modes, and would have capitalized on F-14D, A-6, and F-15E commonality. The Quick Strike Tomcat would have essentially provided the Navy with maritime F-15E strike capabilities, all while maintaining the F-14D's air superiority features. After implementing the Quick Strike Tomcat, Grumman was to follow up with the ST-21 version. Using data and lessons learned from incredible research aircraft, such as the F-18 Harv, which implemented thrust vectoring, and the super-maneuverable McDonnell Douglas F-15 STOL MTD contributed to some of the planned features found on the ST-21. Planned for the mid to late 90s and following the 1994 purchase of Grumman by Northrop in 1994, the Super Tomcat 21 was to feature an upgraded GE F-110 29 engine, which would have allowed the Tomcat to supercruise at Mach 1.3, an upgraded radar, room for more fuel, improved control surfaces, and potentially even thrust vectoring nozzles. The ST-21 was Grumman's response to the Advanced Tactical Fighter or ATF competition, which pitted the YF-22 against the YF-23. One of the more prominent features of the Super Tomcat 21 was its implementation of Leading Edge Extensions or LEX, a technology that was studied extensively in Northrop's F-5 series of aircraft, culminating in the F-18 Hornet. In fact, the LEX additions to the proposed ST-21 somewhat resemble those found on the Super Hornet, which was in development around the same time. 
the SC-21's LEX, along with the improved control surfaces, would have improved takeoffs, lowered landing speeds, and increased the F-14's high alpha performance. Additionally, the thrust vectoring GE F-110s would have further improved maneuverability, and the larger fuel area would have given the Tomcat even more loiter time and range. Imagine a super cruising F-14 with thrust vectoring, and you have the ST-21. And as amazing as all this sounds, Grumman had further plans for the Tomcat. Following the introduction of the Super Tomcat was the Attack Super Tomcat 21 or AST-21. The AST-21 was to have even more fuel capacity, further improved control surfaces, and an actively electronically scanned array or ASA radar. This would have brought the Tomcat into 4th plus generation technology and made a formidable fighter even more effective by incorporating strike roles into its capabilities. Thanks for joining me in this thought experiment. Grumman had some incredible plans for the Tomcat, and the RAF acquisition would have certainly changed things. Had the RAF gone with the F-14, the Tomcat may still be flying today. And as to actually what ended up happening? While dismissed as an impractical idea at one time, the Ministry of Defense ultimately did order used U.S. fighters. By mid-1985, the Tornado was still not in operational squadron service. To make up for this shortfall, a batch of ex-U.S. Navy F-4J Phantoms were pressed into service to fill the fighter gap. Additionally, the Tornado proved to be an excellent platform and served with distinction, especially in Desert Storm. However, we have to ask ourselves, had the Tomcat become an RAF fighter, would it still be flying today? What do you think? Would the RAF's adoption led to more countries purchasing the F-14? Would there still be Tomcats flying in the air today, possibly in an advanced version? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and now you know.